edition of Inside the Headset. I got with me the head coach of the Oakland Patriots, Coach Kevin Creasy. Well, Coach, last Friday night, went into a playoff-type atmosphere, playoff-type game, uh, went to Maribel, about three hours and 20 minutes from here with all the whatnots, get in over there. Uh, what a great game. Uh, got off a little slow, but uh, I'll let you talk about that, but uh, had a chance to win it, and then it just fell through your fingertips, but uh, you take it from here. Yeah, you know, uh, it was a great atmosphere, like you said. The stadium was packed. Uh, we were there an hour and a half early, and people were already reserving their seats over there. Uh, that just tells you that the home crowd knew it was going to be a, a great atmosphere. Uh, their student section was incredible. Uh, our fans came out in droves. Uh, I think Alcoa was off that night, so there were Alcoa people there on both sides. Uh, so the stadium was definitely rocking. It was packed. Uh, finally got the stadium quieting down a little bit when we took the lead in, uh, late in the game, but it took us a while to, to catch up. We kind of uh, shot ourselves in the foot a few times. I uh, got some red zone penalties that cost us some uh, scoring opportunities. Uh, but our defense made some key stops right there in the second half and gave us an opportunity to catch up. Uh, they had a little problem with a punt return. Yeah. Uh, you know, fumbled a punt return and gave us the ball back, uh, gave us a little momentum. And then, uh, you know, we had some key injuries that were kind of, uh, you know, shooting us in the foot a little bit, but, you know, with our depth, uh, we felt like we should have had a little more continuity going and flow on offense than what yeah. we had uh, because we worked so many different guys in these situations. Uh, so we were a little disappointed in that, uh, the flow and rhythm of our offense. It took a while to kind of catch up. And uh, by then it was almost too late, but I give our guys credit uh, for fighting back against a team like Maryville. A lot of times uh, when you're down two scores at Maryville, you know, the floodgates open and things get just worse and worse and worse. Uh, but our guys made all the right stuff. They fall back to the very end, and, you know, it goes down to 37 seconds when they take the lead. And then, of course, uh, just like the last couple times we played, uh, you know, we still got the ball, you know. It's kind of like poker, a chip and a chair. You got a chance. We got the ball and a timeout. We got a chance. Move the ball down pretty far and uh, almost get in field goal range. Just barely uh, missed it by just a few yards of getting in field goal range. And, I'd love to see our kicker in that opportunity uh, to, to send us to overtime or see what uh, he's all about. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we got a five yard penalty right there at the end. So we went with the Hail Mary, just like we did last year. Same spot on the field, same corner of the end zone. And uh, you know, it's something that we work and, and uh, unfortunately we still haven't quite got that one yet, but it's just a continued work in progress. And, and guys see, you know, now, uh, how important that type of stuff is. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, when you were talking about it, did you have a cause or a reason why you felt like you were just getting a slow start? Was it just the guys, uh, were they not there, but they were there, or whatever the case was may be as far as just getting cranked up and getting into the flow of the game? Or did you feel like you were getting it, you were already in the flow and things just wasn't falling like you wanted them to? What was the cause of just not, they score, you score. They score, you score. What, what, what do you, yeah, well, you know, uh, they took the ball and we made them punt right away. And, yeah. Uh, we get the ball and, you know, as soon as we're heading down the field, uh, you know, we've got a couple backups in. We had a couple guys that, uh, you know, didn't exactly do right this week. So, uh, you know. We and let, not their normal position or not normally supposed to be there? Well, or? yeah, we had some backups in because we had some starters. They got in a little bit of trouble and we made sure that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Maryville week or – uh, Republic week or bye week, you know. Got to fix the team. There's certain expectations that we have, and and so they were over there with me that first series, and and uh, maybe that you know maybe that was part okay. of it, uh, but you know that's on them, you know that's on them for uh, getting in trouble in the first place. So uh, you know I think that definitely got a lot of people's attention, and uh, maybe next time we'll have our full starting unit out there and uh, won't make certain mistakes that we made and. Like I said, it was self-inflicted wounds, you know. Uh, uh, Maryville has a really good team, but a lot of times we shot ourselves in the foot with just uh, unnecessary, you know, unforced errors. Yeah, well, you got to give the effort in coming back and fighting back. Once you got the, once you got a score on and you got a little momentum, boy, it, it's amazing how that drama, or as many people call it, the swing goes. 
And now all of a sudden we're back in this thing. You, you knew you knew in the back of your mind you're always in it, but now the crowd starts getting into it. And as you says, the environment changes dramatically. Yeah, I was real real proud of our crowd. You know, making that trip. You know, it was a packed house on our side as well, and they had plenty to cheer about in the second half. In the first half, uh, you know, I thought we played kind of bad. And, uh, you know, never got uh, much going our way, and. And then, uh, of course, in the second half, I thought it was a tale of two halves. You know, our guys came out fighting, fought from uh, behind most of the night, and, you know, like took a lead. Uh, but, you know, you're never safe with a lead when you're playing a team like Maryville. So, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't hold on to it. And then at the end, we couldn't come back. You know, we just, uh, I think it was 36 seconds and one timeout. But, again, you know, we're not exactly, uh, you know, a shotgun, two-minute offense type team. but. Uh, we ran the two-minute drill really well, yeah, uh, and uh, had a chance to at least tie the ball game there at the end. So some good takeaways as far as the two-minute drill, fighting back, uh, and a couple of other areas, and you feel good about that other than the loss. But there are there are always, even in that close a game, there are some takeaways where, like you say, we did this, we did this just what we were we were where we needed to be. That's right. You know, that's what I told them. You know, if if you had a problem blocking and tackling and all those things uh, this you know this time of the year uh, a lot of times you'd have to be replaced because uh, you know you should be able to block and tackle by now uh, but if you don't have heart and guts uh, we can't teach it no. to you right now <laughs> and so our guys show a lot of heart and guts yeah. uh, fighting back and, and you know give them credit they, they had it as well so uh, that's why it's always a good matchup you know uh, we can talk about talent all we want. Uh, heart and guts usually decide these games and um, mistakes. Uh, luckily for us, we you know did really good on the turnover battle. I thought time of possession was in our favor most of the night. Uh, just came up a little short right there at the end. Uh, had a shank punt. Uh, you know our guy's been averaging 60 yards a punt. And we needed a good punt, and shanked one out of bounds, gave him really good field position with uh, not much time on the clock. Well, we've got a little time, as you say, to get all that fixed because it'll be a while before you see them, and hopefully a little while before you're ever in that predicament again. You know. Well, you know, we're not guaranteed to see them again. You know, we still have plenty of our season left. We got a lot of games left. Uh, you know, we got to take care of business next week, and then of course, then our region play starts, and uh, I always have. A uh, huge battle with uh, the Battle of the Borough, and then Blackman's right after that. So to have those two teams back to back, you know, we got a long ways to go. Well, they do too. I mean, that, they could end up. That's what I'm saying. They could end up, you know, uh, having to come here the first round of the play. You never know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they've got some. They've got some. They've got to hit some mile markers in their uh, stretch. Also, let's close the chapter. Enough of Maryville. We'll put that up on the shelf, and, and that's history. You're off this week, so. Uh, you, you, you now, um, you start, you know, you don't have anybody to trade with. You get home, it's Friday night or actually early Saturday morning. And so, uh, and now you're starting your off week. So you're off till next Friday night. So uh, how's Oakland Patriots and what are we doing this week? And uh, what can we work on as you take your, what they call bye week or rest week or whatever? Because when you come back next Friday, there's no stopping. You, you play yeah. every Friday as yeah. long as you can live. Yep, that's good. We hope to. Uh, you know, we're working on the Oakland Patriots this week. You know, we've got plenty to work on on ourselves, and uh, we'll go our offense against our defense and vice versa. And, uh, there's certain situations we want to keep continuing working and uh, getting better at. I thought there was several times where it was a must-throw situation where uh, we didn't get it done. So uh, we're working on uh, moving people around and making decisions better and, you know, pass protection better and all those things. Uh, there's certain times where uh, you've got to have a plan, and, and uh, I don't think we executed those things well. And again, what better defense can you go against than our own defense? And then, of course, our, our defense as well is, is looking to you know, tackle these uh, big running backs that we got because it seems like every time that we have a little trouble on defense, you know, somebody has a quick receiver yep. and a thick running back, and those are things that we got as well. So we just want to continue to work on ourselves, continue to improve, and, you know, there's no such thing as off week, you know. Uh, we'll give them Friday off, and uh, at the end of it, uh, we're going to work on ourselves and get ourselves better. Well, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Let's talk a little bit about uh, those other grades. You've got 
JV, you've got freshmen, you got Oakland, uh, Oakland Middle School, and you're highly involved in all three. The middle school part you're really involved with, and of course of Kyler, your, your yeah. son and everything, but you got a freshman, you got a JV. How are those squads doing, and how is that progression coming? Because that is uh, that's the foundation of your next football club coming up, and so how are those groups doing? Yeah, yeah, real proud of our JV. Uh, JV's uh, won two games. They played twice. They've won both of them. Uh, pretty handily, and in our freshmen, uh, we got some of the biggest and, and best looking freshmen we've seen in a long time. Uh, they gave up their first touchdown of the season the other night with like three seconds left, but uh, they've uh, won all three of their games uh, by substantial margins. Uh, they're undefeated. The junior high went and watched them last night. Okay, they, I, I, the new Kyle. They, they beat Siegel. And, okay, good. And so uh, the junior high's JV team won as well. So, okay, and that's so Kyler. That's Kyler. They won 30 to nothing. Couldn't be prouder of those guys. So, you know, you're looking. The JV for the junior high's undefeated. The junior high's undefeated. Uh, the, high, the middle school, I don't like to be called junior high. Okay. The, the middle school is undefeated. Uh, the freshman team's undefeated. And the JV team's undefeated. You know, this is exactly the steps that we love to put in place when we first got here to continue the success of Oakland. And... Uh, I think we've got a pretty good deal going with our Oakland youth football as well. So, you know, you got to start young and you got to set the expectations young. And uh, so far, so good. We got some really good coaches that used to work with me uh, that are now the middle school coaches, you know, head coach, D coordinator. And uh, they're setting those guys in the right direction and they're helping our freshman team. Our freshman team's helping our JV team, our JV team's helping our varsity team. And that's kind of what we expect, you know. It takes a while to become a starter here at, in Oakland. You know, you don't just all of a sudden get into high school and start for us. Uh, you know, there's some steps you got to take, and hopefully those steps kind of teach you the ways of our uh, football program, not just our football team, our football program, and our expectations. And then uh, whenever we play a big team uh, like Maryville on week two, uh, we don't have somebody getting in trouble at school. Right. You know, that's us taking care of in sixth grade instead of twelfth grade. Well, you're a football player at the high school level and understand all the ramifications surround that, that high prestige. That's right. Well, let's wrap it up. You're off this week. We'll talk about Republic next week and take a little break and everything. Get out. Get to see a ball game. There's one local. You can go see Riverdale and Siegel or whatnot. Uh, but get out and get to see a game this Friday night. And we'll talk to Coach Kevin Creasy next week as he prepares for Republic.